There's a lot the Chinese regime doesn't want you to know about, and YouTube is helping them keep it under wraps. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. First, I want to announce we have a brand new channel devoted to video games called Gamers Unbeaten. We started it in part because YouTube is slowly killing China Uncensored. Talking about politics while playing video games is one of our fallback strategies to get around YouTube's censorship. The next episode is about Street Fighter and globalism. You'll love it. Also, we didn't mention it in the episode, but I'm pretty sure Blanca is a human-animal chimera created in a Chinese lab deep in the Amazon jungle. But yes, I'm sorry to say YouTube has unveiled a new strategy to seriously undermine our efforts to expose the Chinese Communist Party. Age restriction. I suspect pro-CCP bot accounts are mass-flagging our episodes until YouTube age restricts them. We know China is actively using bot accounts to push their narratives on social media. Some have estimated at least 15% of Chinese accounts on Twitter are bots. I guess it could be worse. At least they're not sending other types of robots after us. Yet. In fact, we know an awful lot about China and Twitter now thanks to a Twitter whistleblower. Twitter is making hundreds of millions of dollars a year from Chinese clients which makes China one of Twitter's largest non-U.S. revenue streams. Twitter also was giving user data to China. And according to the FBI, Twitter had actually employed at least one Chinese spy. Great. So Twitter is basically just TikTok minus the dancing, which I guess still makes it better, but not by much. Now, Twitter is much smaller than YouTube. So you gotta wonder if the Chinese regime is putting that much effort into Twitter What's going on behind the scenes at YouTube and Google? I've told you before about how YouTube just so happens to demonetize episodes that cover topics the Chinese regime really doesn't want people talking about. Basically, all of our 2019 coverage of the Hong Kong protests was demonetized, including when we actually went to Hong Kong and stayed for weeks to cover those protests live. Twice. It was so bad that a reporter actually wrote an article about us getting demonetized. And then YouTube started reversing some of that demonetization after that reporter started asking them questions about it. We had similar problems getting demonetized with the unnamed virus of mysterious origins. In all these cases, YouTube would never say why they demonetized us, just the vague accusation of violating YouTube's community guidelines. No specifics. And even though YouTube would sometimes re-monetize a video after we complained on social media, it would take several days, and by then, we had already lost nearly all the ad revenue. Now believe me when I say I was never under the illusion that talking about the crimes of the Chinese Communist Party would be a big moneymaker. People committed to telling the truth don't usually wind up rich. You never hear of philosophy majors that think life's greatest challenge is finding enough hangers to store all their private jets. But the problem with how frequently we were getting demonetized was that we couldn't even afford to keep making the show. YouTube was running us out of business. Fortunately, China Uncensored was able to survive demonetization thanks to the support of fans who stepped up and contributed directly by pledging a dollar or more per episode through the crowdfunding website Patreon, and supporters who subscribe monthly through our Locals page. Thank you again to everyone who has kept China Uncensored going. But the age restricting is much worse, and we're struggling to get around it. I'll tell you more after this quick commercial break. I'm kidding, I'm not even going to bother putting ad breaks in this episode. By the way, if all you see after our usual commercial breaks is a brief black screen, that means we were demonetized. So in the past few weeks, we've suddenly found a lot of our episodes getting age restricted. Pretty banal episodes, too, like this one about Biden's executive order limiting Chinese access to American microchip technology. Oh no, we have to protect the innocent children from foreign policy in the tech sector. The pattern is pretty striking. Several weeks after an episode is published, YouTube suddenly decides an episode isn't appropriate for anyone under 18. 
Here's the notice they gave us for the microchip episode. As you can see, no reason was given, just that it violated community guidelines. Now, I appealed the ruling. What YouTube says it does is then assign a human reviewer to actually look at the episode and verify if it violated the community guidelines. But in all these recent cases, the appeal was rejected immediately. Who knew that foreign policy in the tech sector was such a hot-button issue? We should have just talked about something less controversial, like abortion. Actually, we have a pretty good guess for why these episodes are getting age-restricted. It seems to happen whenever we show video or photos of one of the Chinese Communist Party's human rights crimes. In the microchip episode, we briefly talked about how the Communist Party is committing genocide against the Uyghurs. And we showed this famous footage of blindfolded Uyghur prisoners. Nothing violent happens in the footage, but they're obviously blindfolded prisoners. I'm not going to show you that footage here, because then our episode about YouTube's age restrictions would get age restricted. In another recent example, YouTube suddenly age-restricted an episode we did on the UK's changing China policy. Either YouTube is really afraid of foreign policy episodes, or, yep, there it is, we showed a still image of Hong Kong police arresting protesters. That episode is still age-restricted. And the fact that YouTube is age-restricting evidence of the Chinese Communist Party's human rights violations is even worse, because if you can't show it, it's so much easier for people to deny it's actually happening. And this age restriction problem isn't just happening to us. Here's a reporter for ABC Australia talking about how his documentaries on China's influence in Hong Kong and Taiwan are suddenly being age restricted. Other videos about the Chinese Communist Party's actions in Hong Kong and Australia were age restricted as well. Once something is age restricted, it's pretty hard to get it reversed. YouTube claims to review each episode when we appeal the age restriction, but that can't be true. Here's the rejection for the microchip episode. It says, we reviewed your content carefully, but that's impossible. They sent this seconds after my appeal, and it's a 12-minute episode. So YouTube is definitely lying to us. Age restriction means the episodes will not be visible to users who are logged out, are under 18 years of age, or have restricted mode enabled. This is why it's so much worse than demonetization. Although age-restricted videos are also demonetized, the bigger problem is when a video gets age-restricted, that kills the views. YouTube won't push it out. It won't recommend it, and even subscribers might not get notified. And the way YouTube's algorithms work is that it rewards viewership. The more views a video and channel gets, the more the algorithm will show it to people driving up viewership. The opposite is true, too. When a video does poorly, YouTube won't recommend it or the channel as much. Basically, YouTube creates either exponential growth or a death spiral. And that's how YouTube's algorithm can cut off viewership to China Uncensored. And when they put us in a death spiral, it's basically YouTube making sure people don't learn about the things the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want them to hear. And they can do this without having to explicitly target China Uncensored. It's just the algorithm. Essentially, I'm screaming into the abyss. And when you scream into the abyss, the abyss screams back at you. I'm paraphrasing the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who wrote that on one of his private jets. This is how I believe pro-CCP bot accounts are gaming YouTube's algorithm to actively try and prevent people from seeing China Uncensored. I constantly hear from viewers who say YouTube is not notifying them of new episodes, even if they're subscribed and have the notification bell on. And now I think we know why. Maybe one day we'll see YouTube and Google's China connections exposed like we're seeing happen with Twitter. But until then, what can we do right now? The best solution is to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. When you join through Patreon, you'll get a notice any time a new episode is posted. So even if YouTube tries to bury it, you'll still know when we have a new episode out. To join the China Uncensored community, create a Patreon account or log in if you already have one. Choose which level you want to join at. You can start with a dollar per episode or pledge more to get additional perks. We produce about 18 episodes each month. If that's going to add up to too much for you, you can set a monthly limit of how much you want to contribute. Really, anything helps. 
although more support helps us produce more content. Regardless, once you sign up, you'll always get notified of new episodes. Plus, you'll get other perks, including the opportunity to have me answer your question at the end of an episode. I do really appreciate each and every person who signs up because you're the ones making China Uncensored possible. And today's Patreon question comes from Ringleader. Hey Chris, when the CCP collapses, what will happen to the countries that are part of the B&R projects? I'm really happy you said when, not if, Ringleader. So yes, the Chinese Communist Party has trapped many countries around the world in debt thanks to its Belt and Road projects. One of the most famous disasters is Sri Lanka. The Prime Minister said this year the whole country was bankrupt. Now I can't say all the blame for that lies with the CCP, but the massive debt Sri Lanka owed China definitely played a part. So what happens to all these countries when the CCP collapses? Well, the first thing that will happen is all that debt will immediately be called into question. First of all, I doubt whether a lot of the Belt and Road projects will continue without the push from the Chinese regime. So a lot of projects might be left undone or half finished. But at least the debt associated with it might just disappear. It's kind of like when Fire Festival was exposed as a scam. It's not like the dude who organized it was sitting in jail, still sending debt collectors to people who haven't paid for their ticket yet. A lot will depend on the kind of government that replaces the Communist Party. I'm hoping for a free and open society, one that wouldn't make the kind of deals the CCP was making with dictators around the world. That's right, a lot of Belt and Road projects were made with dictators. The CCP is helping prop up these corrupt regimes at the expense of the people in those countries. Without the CCP's backing, it's possible those regimes wouldn't survive. When you really dig into it, the CCP is actively making the world a worse place. When it's gone, the world will probably change for the better in ways we can't even imagine. Except for the fact that we wouldn't need a China Uncensored anymore, which would be sad. Unless you subscribe to Gamers Unbeaten, we can make that show forever. Maybe our next episode will be about foreign policy in the Mushroom Kingdom. Hope YouTube doesn't decide to age restrict us for that. Thanks for your question and your support, Ringleader. And remember, if you want to support the show and be notified of episodes, even when YouTube age restricts them, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.